Welcome back, Zero K fans. To Natalie the Dawn, I remain your host, Chad of Fury three two three. And this last match for today is going to be between Dying Friend and Lamadeus on Hide and Seek. Dying Friend going for the Cloaky Bot Factory, Lamadeus going for the Shield Bot Factory. Pretty basic factory choice on this map. It's makes a lot of sense. Although Dying Friend pretty confident in their position and going for very early Conjurer rather than going for early Glaives, whereas Lamadeus going for early Bandits. Going for a bit the early rating, but this map is fairly large, and the opening area is quite defensible. So, I like the way that Dying Friend's doing this. Time for getting up an early defender as well, so they should be fine. They'll have no problems with this. And then, from there, it's strong opening. I mean, both players did go for the 2.4 metal, metal extractor. That is the one to go for to start with. I totally agree with that opening. Lama Day is still a little bit behind, though. Dying Friend's able to expand a touch faster. Although, they did sp still spend quite a bit of the metal on the same thing. So the main thing right now is that Lamadeus, their main defense right now is the fact that they are pushing Dimefriend a bit because of the bandits coming forward. But if Dimefriend's able to take care of the bandits, then Dimefriend doesn't really have a whole lot of to worry about in the main base. Lamadeus might build static defenses. Yeah, there it is. There's the defender. Thinking they might build static defenses in response to Dimefriend coming. And indeed, they are building some static defenses just because that's what you do. One or two early defenders once you know what your opponent's up to. Usually a good idea. Unfortunately for Dying Friend, their defender is not in a position to defend all their metal extractors, whereas Lama Deus's is. Except maybe this one. This one might be at risk. Very barely, though. That'd be the very edge of the defender's range. Still, Dying Friend, not too phased. At this point, though, the question is what you do from here, because Dying Friend, going for the 2.7 over on the side, that's one thing about my hide and seek. There's a lot of different values of metal extractor, which is why it's really nice to have the economy, val economy window up, especially with the numbers. Which is not the default. You have to you have to change that setting. I kind of wish it was, but oh well. Anyway, normally it just shows bars of metal, which isn't entirely clear how much of a difference there is between different metal spots. Regardless, Lamadeus right now, bit of an advantage for their attacks and for attrition, but Dying Friend slowly taking the economic advantage. I like the use of the Lotus here, too. This defense is pretty much what they need. Dime Throwing Day is going to be setting up here, so they want to make sure they don't lose it first. At the same time, a couple... Gla oh, Glaive coming back here. Able to, get rid of a able to get rid of a defender opening up the north side of the map. If they can get rid of this... No, they can't. There's no way. The bandits will kill them first. So Dime Friend wisely getting away from that convict. Avoiding the bandits. Actually leading them quite a ways away from everywhere else. And at the same time... Dimefriend already prepared. Already had everything in position to stop the bandits coming in from Lamadeus. Nice exchange for Dimefriend. Lamadeus losing a little bit there. Unfortunately, why is... Dimefriend, why are you... The metal extractor isn't done, Dimefriend. It's like 95% done. That's a really good metal extractor. Dimefriend, no! What are you thinking? I don't know why that happened. So, yeah, that was a bit weird. I don't know where that's going. Oh, darn it, don't talk to me here. Anyway, this... I didn't realize... All right, I guess people can see my private messages in the lobby from the game. I've got to not let that happen. Anyway, sorry about that. The... The important thing is Dying Friend coming in with the raids. Lamadeus actually quite a ways ahead economically for metal. Their energy economy is not doing great, but they are getting that set up. So are they are they getting that set up? Yeah, there's there's a solar collector. Might not be up in time. They'll need two or three more. Just to be able to get that in time. But they do have the economy advantage for metal. Mostly because this is 95% completed. Why is it 95% completed? Anyway, that's. Actually, quite a nice position here. The Glaives coming in should be able to take care of the 2.7 Metal Extractor right away. Oh, I love that. Dime Frame pulling away from the Metal Extractor before it explodes. Pretty much everything in the game does have a death explosion, so it's important when you have units that you want to keep alive for long-term raids not to be near things as you kill them. Otherwise, your units will die thanks to the death explosions. Now, Metal Extractors don't have a particularly large death explosion, but they do have one. It deals 80 damage in a radius about twice, or about as far away as they are from themselves. Like, one and a half times the size of a metal extractor away from themselves. So I like that Dying Frame pulled away at the last second. That is... That is someone who knows what they're doing when it comes to the game. Like, that's a huge... That's a small thing. For metal extractors especially. For metal extractors and caretakers, that's a small thing that adds up. 
for other buildings like fusion plants, that's just something you gotta know because otherwise you're gonna lose everything to the death explosion. Oh yeah, sorry, if you want to see death explosion radius, you have to select whatever you're using, hold space and X. I know space is weird, space is a modifier key in 0k. But yeah, hold space and X when you have something selected, you'll see this death explosion. The number is the amount of damage it deals, the the orange grid is the actual radius of it. At this point, Lamadeus, they've got a pretty strong position over the eastern side. It's not, like, terrifyingly strong, and Dying Friend's about the same on the western side, but Dying Friend, actually, neither player's really taking the back side. They're both aware that they're that the other wants to go for it. Also, Dying Friend still hasn't taken this one. Metal Extractor, I don't know why they haven't realized that hasn't been completed yet. But, yeah, this is probably why. The back part is hard to defend. Once they get set up, we probably will see that be used. But right now, that's kind of hard to set up. So I will grant that. At this point, though, it looks like Dying Friend actually does basically have the static defenses needed to stop any bandits from coming in around the back. So at this point, we should see Dying Friend start to expand over to the back side of the map and take loads of extra money. Or extra metal, rather. Lama Deus, on the other hand, they have this lane open here. And over the north side as well. So the northeast is quite vulnerable. At least as long as Lama Deus is not putting their bandits around where they need to be in order to stop any glaives from getting in. Which, at this point, they are, so it's still fine. I mean, Lamadeus is still doing fine, taking care of all this stuff. Dying Friend should be able to, however, build up their own metal in the back. I mean, this... Yeah, there's there's the Conjurer to do it. So yeah, Dying Friend should be able to get back up in metal, if not ahead slightly. At the same time, though, Lamadeus is doing quite well army-wise. Like, 23 bandits compared to 17 glaives. And that that number will soon drop as all these glaives are going on a suicide mission into Lamadeus' base. One-way trip, although fairly productive one-way trip at that. In fact, two of them might be able to get away. Yeah, that's one more. Oh, that's that's the defender I was pointing out earlier, the one that was well positioned to defend all the metal extractors, having gone down. So all the metal extractors are now quite open. Lamadeus, ooh, not able to get an easy position here though. And this last glaive is walking to its death as the defenders will tear it to pieces. But hey, that still dealt a meaningful amount of damage. Is Dying Friend able to get their metal economy fairly strong? Unfortunately, not using their metal efficiently enough. They will start accessing in a couple seconds. They need way more energy right now if they want to not access. Also, a bit more build power. This, These two conjurers here, I'm a bit surprised they are not helping out the Kalokibot factory. Why are they not helping to build? I don't know. But Dying Friend is accessing as a result. And they have the energy to deal with it. Okay, there's the caretaker, at least. That's something. And, okay, so Dying Friend's getting on it. Getting the build power. Trying to avoid excess. It's a, it's a small amount of excess, not a big deal. Lamadeus, on the other hand, I don't think they've excessed at all this game, but that's not the big thing. The big thing is that Lamadeus does have the 25 bandit army, while Dying Friend keeps losing their glaives. They have 18 right now, but it's a question of positioning. And actually, right now, Dying Friend's in the northwest. Trying to probably take the northwest side over here. If they can cut off this entire passage they could actually tear apart pretty much everything Lamadeus does in a few minutes after taking all these metal extractors, getting an even larger economic advantage, and then swarming around what Lamadeus has. Lamadeus, on the other hand, trying to break through these defenses over to the south, and that's actually working out all right. Dying Friend didn't have a whole lot of mobile units over here. They didn't have a lot of units over to the south side of the map, but the glaives coming in afterwards will be able to tear apart what Lamadeus has sent. So these bandits are going to go down. Everything's going to be reclaimed. Hopefully the next Conjurer that comes through here will realize there is an unconstructed metal extractor and actually finish that up. And then once that's done, Dying Friend will have a south side defended again. But at this point, that's actually not defended. That's actually really dangerously undefended. Ah, there's the Stardust. All right, it'll be fine in a sec. Over to the north, though, these Glaives going on another suicide mission. Well, different Glaives, obviously. But more Glaives on another suicide mission. Actually, nice micro there. Avoiding most of the bandits, keeping it, keeping a high number of glaives next to a low number of bandits. That's pretty much the only way you can micro raiders in this game, and that's exactly what Dying Friend did. Though able to take quite a bit of damage and only losing two glaives in the process. So much for suicide mission, that was actually quite efficient. Speaking of efficiency, Dying Friend right now, 
25% advantage in metal destroyed compared to Lamadeus. And also unit kill advantage as well, because bandits are actually a touch more expensive than glaives. At this point, though, the switch over to Rockos may be a little premature. I kind of understand because they want to use Rockos to get rid of static defenses and get rid of metal extractors outside of the range of static defenses, or at least outside of the range of lotuses. Or not quite, sorry. They are actually equal range, but still. At the edge of the range of static defenses, it's still a good idea to have. But it feels like jumping the gun a bit. We don't see any thug law balls coming out from Lamadeus, and I don't expect a whole lot very soon. It looks like Lamadeus is focusing entirely on bandits. They are, however, a small vandal thing. They are, however, expecting some air units. Actually, I, I guess I might see my words. Looks like Thug Rogue is actually coming up now. Bit surprising as the... Oh, I see, because the warrior, that makes sense. Thing is, bit surprised because the Rockers have been built, so they know that there's a counter to them, but yeah, the warrior makes sense. At the same time, though, this is what I mean, the bit of jumping the gun on the Rockos, and dying from lost quite a few in that engagement. They're still putting a fair amount of pressure on Lama Deus in the process. And also, also, Glaives over to the north likely to go across here into the back, and there's not a whole lot defending it. I mean, in terms of mobile units, not even a whole lot there either. Not sure when Dying Friend intends to actually spring this attack, but when they do, if they do in the next couple minutes, it should be devastating. Still, though, as it stands, Dying Friend and Lamadeus are roughly even in terms of economy, and Dying Friend just slowly but surely getting everything up. And hey, they built the 2.7 metal! This is built! It exists! Dying Friend's getting the metal off that! But yeah, there's Stardust from Dying Friend to try to basically stop any attempts to get through this. It's not going to work, though. The Rogue should be able to tear it apart. This next volley will do it. But hey, they got rid, of, got rid of a few bandits at the very least, but the northern side, it's still Lamadeus's. Not sure what else is being planned here. There's the Glaives. Not sure when they're going to go for the attack. There they go! They're going to go right now! That's a good time. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. Get rid of these other things. And then get rid of the back. Actually, by this point, it should be... Yeah, it's kind of telegraphed. But at the same time, Dimefront is coming in for a second attack over to the north again. So a nice distraction pincer play here. I mean, obviously, the real play is this northern attack. And Lamadeus knows that they are going to try to defend against it. They have the Stardust up as well, but it's not going to be up in time. It's going to take 27 seconds, and these are going to be here in five. But they're going to see it, right? They are going to see it? Please tell me they see it. There they go. Okay, now they see it. Getting rid of the Stardust. That is important. Because if they hadn't gotten rid of the Stardust, they wouldn't be able to do much. They certainly wouldn't get reinforcements, and that would actually cut off any attempts at dealing with that later on. And I like this Dying Friend sending one Glaive over to the northeast to see what's there, just to double check without sending their entire army there to die, which they would have. And instead going for a safer attack over to the northeast here. I mean, there's no easy way for these Glaives to set up safely. Why are... Ah, avoid that Stardust! Okay. Still a fairly smart play from Dimefriend. Dealt quite a bit of damage to the Lama Deus. To our part of the north side, the northeast was actually better defended than Dimefriend probably expected, but still, I like that they checked first. And at the same time, getting a bit of pushback over to the northern side of the map, which I'm not terribly surprised by, but Dimefriend still able to maintain the position, and there, there are no Vandals. We saw a few Vandals actually coming up for Lama Deus. They were predicting some error, but didn't come up when they expected it to, and Dimefriend clearly, clearly faked them out on that one. Because there's hardly any anti-air here. The rogue's going to do what they can, but they're not going to be able to do much. The dying friends should be able to break the northern side, and if they lose this, Lama Deus might have a very difficult time defending their own main base. Though they have enough... Now they have enough metal, they can easily rebuild this. Like, dying friend has to break through a massive defender's advantage here. And they don't have the army yet. They do have a strider hub coming up, though, in a second. That should be building up a Dante, most likely. That will be able to break the north side. And actually, the south side has taken no damage either. We don't see anything on the minimap there. No real activity in the southern choke point. Just the northern one. And the Vandals, there's the Vandals. I was wondering when they'd come up, and there they are. But at the same time, this northern choke point has been taken. All the reclaim going to Dimefriend. Dimefriend, why do you have no... To get storage! Get storage! Like, I, I get the build power. I like that. I like the build power. A bit more energy would be nice. But get storage! Like, there's no way you can use this metal. I guess ex reclaiming is still good. It's still stopping Lamadeus from taking it. So I'm not going to disagree with the reclaims. 
I kind of wish for Dying Prune's sake they had storage or they had more energy in the process, but go for the reclaim at the very least that will keep it out of Lamadeus' hands. Like, this position, this highly forward position right inside of Lamadeus' base where Lamadeus keeps maintaining territory control, that is something Lamadeus is going to get back, like, right now. So at least the reclaim is not available for Lamadeus. So while it was excess, this is one of those times where it's fine. It's absolutely fine. And over to the south, at the same time, a couple brawlers coming in here, tearing apart Lama Deus's expansions over to the south side of their base and kind of cutting off the southeast. There's a lot of static defenses here, but that's not doing too much. Although the brawlers aren't really able to get the vandals that efficiently. This is what I mean by attack move doing a fine job. The vandals are basically just avoiding the shots as best as possible and managing to stay alive quite well, too. But anyway... There's the Dante. Unfortunately, there isn't as strong of a force over to the northern side to deal with that as easily. And I want, I'm thinking the southern side might actually be where the Dante comes through. Like, just go up through the south and up the south side of the base. I mean, the power plants are kind of in the way, but they can go over the hill and that's fine. Like, a Dante... Still gonna have a tough time, but with the forces of Lamedes being kept thin... It shouldn't be too difficult. The rogues are the main problem. And actually, there's quite a... There's 18 of them. 14 of them right here. So that's still going to be an issue. In 20 seconds, we will have the Dante, though. We will see what Daimfroin does. And Daimfroin's still taking a strong position on the northwest. As Lamadeus did in the southeast. Probably way too strong, actually. That's... That is a lot of defenders. That's metal that probably doesn't need to be spent there. But it stops Daimfroin from attacking it. So I guess it's all right. We have seen Daimfroin be quite aggressive. So I'm not entirely disagreeing with that, but it does seem a little excessive. And the bandits coming in here, they're not going to make it. This Stardust will chew them all up, as demonstrated here. Which actually puts Dying for and Lamadeus even exactly for metal, or for metal destroyed. Which is not necessarily a great measure, being the size of this map makes it kind of difficult to really gauge just how relevant that is. Still, though, Dimefriend is managing to hold the north some if they are losing it. Right, they are doing what they can to keep the convicts from building up as much as possible, but it's slowing things down. That might slow it down enough, though. The Dante is going north, indeed. I'm not sure why, but it is going north. So yeah, with this Dante going north, that sh that'll get rid of the Dante, actually. I have very little faith in this Dante doing well. And neither does Dimefriend, as they're making a good call and going south instead. Because those rogues would rip that Dante to pieces. Like, there's no way that Dante would be able to deal with them. The Brawler might be able to, actually. And that'd be a good option to get rid of the rogues, but... The Dante? No, it gets countered by that many rogues. There's no way that's happening. Actually, where'd the Dante go? No, it's still going north again! It's going north? Really? Is that got that much of a death wish? Alright. I mean, right now, it's not a huge deal. The rogues are out of position, so it actually could get in and deal significant damage. And will get in and deal significant damage. All the convict going down in the process. So this is working out. But. And yes, it's always Dante's. Dante's are the cheapest strider in the game. It's That's why it's always Dante's. Occasionally Scorpions, but almost always Dante's. Because Scorpions, while strong, are basically just EMP tools with a cloaking device. They're not really that great at direct damage or at breaking down walls. Because at this point, this is what you need the Strider for, is to break down a bunch of defender walls and break down your opponent's army and tear them apart from there. Okay, Dimefriend, you have... Now you have quite a lot of build power. Not sure why the airplane plant isn't doing anything. Like, Vulture would be quite nice right about now. Still, Dimefriend is winning convincingly in the army game. Pretty much forcing Lamadeus into a tight corner in the northeast. I mean, they do have the southwest control to some extent. Their commander is actually over there. So there's room for some pressure there, but the problem is if they move away from the north side of the map, they are going to lose their main base. I mean, they do have a couple of bandits quite cleverly set up around here, but the Stardust will get rid of them. Dimefriend has been quite careful with their setup. And at this point... Ooh, the Rapier's actually managing to get hit by some stuff here. So these Rapier's not doing too well for themselves... Bit of a shame for them. But yeah, Lamadeus basically has no easy way out of this. I mean, they have racketeers. They aren't building any racketeers, but they're shield bots. So, yeah, racketeers would be the first option I'd go for. 
And it's usually what you see in this situation, actually. Like, mass racketeers disarm the Dante, and then rush in with the rest of your forces to kill it. And like I said, the rogues are already there, so the Dante can't attack that directly. Which is why I was expecting the airplane factory would be building up, like, a vulture to see what's going on, and then probably Thunderbirds to stun out everything, because that's what you always build. Maybe a Phoenix, but I seriously doubt it. That'd be very surprising. But yeah, Thunderbird would make sense, because that would stun out all these units, and then the Dante could come in and just tear them to shreds. Actually, everything could come in and tear them to shreds. But the Northern Choke Point has been claimed. However, the Southern side is taking a bit of damage, and Amadeus does see there's not a whole lot holding off anything on the south side of the map. So I'm guessing they're going to shift their focus there to an extent if they can. I and mean, they have the gunships going there. So they have some focus over to the south side of the map. The north side, they still have to defend because they can't let it... They can't let it become obvious that they're moving away from the northern side because Dianfern will come in. I mean, Dianfern's still putting pressure on the northern side. There's not much Lamadeus can really do. And I like the use of the rapiers over to the south to try to deal with what they can, but Dianfern's already on that. And at the same time, over to the... Second northernmost choke point, that is where Dianfrin's looking to take this game. Unfortunately, the units were a little bit separated, so they didn't manage to bring all their force to bear at the same time, but still, this should fall pretty quick. And that distraction will be enough, allowing the Dante some room to get in. The rogues get out of the way. The Dante is going to move in with some support. And at this point, the rogues basically not sure where they need to go. Like, this is a great distraction. This is a wonderful distraction play. Lamadeus' force is pretty much following Dianfriend as Dianfriend retreats. And that leaves the Dante the exact perfect opening needed to get into the base and probably finish it off. Or at least break most of the defenses, as long as the Dante doesn't die. If it dies, Lamadeus has loads of metal they can use to reclaim. They have loads of energy and build power to use to actually make use of that reclaim. And that distraction attack... Ooh, it's kind of fallen back. It's actually fallen back pretty hard. And the Dante, now in a dangerous position, very far up front. However, that D-gun attack, that napalm missile spray, that might have just done the trick. It certainly removed most of the rogues from the equation, but it's still not enough that Dante won't be able to escape with its life unless it gets really lucky. These conjurers here need to start repairing it if they want it to live. Conjurers, go for the repair! No, that's it! The Dante's gone down! There were too many rogues. The conjurers could have helped out to repair. But even then, those rogues going down here, bit of a shame, but there's still the reclaim happening at least. Dianfrin is able to take that reclaim for now? Maybe? Actually, no. No, this might turn it around. I think Lamadeus can take back this game now. Southern side is being heavily pressured, though. And that south side pressure could still be enough to finish it. But with the Dante reclaim basically in Lamadeus' territory, that could turn around fast. So Lamadeus losing most of the economy over to the eastern side of the map, over to the southern side of the map. This... Hmm. I don't see this being necessarily game-winning. We do have a Vulture. There we go. Not sure where the Thunderbird's gonna be, but hopefully it'll be up eventually. And Impalers as well. Huh. Just Impaler assist call. Off the light vehicle factory. Interesting choice. But yeah, pressure on all flanks. I'm not sure what Lamadeus really has to deal with this. They don't have a whole lot of units, or strong heavyweight units to deal with this stuff. Their lightweight units are being torn apart by Dimefrain's slightly larger army, an increasingly larger army. Dimefrain... Actually, come to think of it, Dimefrain might only be winning on it. Yeah, they're only really winning on attrition. Their economy is still a bit weaker. But these flanks, these attacks like this, they're doing a fine job. I think this one's actually a mistake, though. Going to the southeast, I mean, this is... This isn't bad from a long-term perspective, like making sure that Dimefrain takes out this area and makes sure Lamadeus doesn't have this free economy. But I think Lamadeus basically has this for the rest of the game. Like, Dianfrain is going to be losing quite a lot to take out the southeast. They're losing a lot of position. They're losing loads of units in the process. And they're not really gaining a whole lot. Like, they're forcing a bit of a distraction, but not enough to make their northern side that much easier to deal with. So yeah, this is kind of a suicide mission. I don't think Dimefrain quite realized just how much Lamadeus... No, they didn't. They had no idea how much Lamadeus had. They have no radar coverage or history of that southeast defense net. Now they know. Never to go there again. That's That belongs to Lamadeus now, unless they go for a nuke. I mean, like a tactical nuke, like an Inferno. If they go for an Inferno and start hitting that southeast, yeah, sure, they got it then. But otherwise, there's no way they're taking that. And yes, for those of you wondering, that is, in fact, 
Actually, only 4,000 metal in defenders, not 8,000 metal. Not quite that much, but still a huge amount of metal in defenders. At this point, though, Lamade is going for a counterattack, basically walking into a trap. Forced back again. So the Impalers are able to take out the stack defenses inside of Lamadeus' base, at the same time that the northern side being protected by the Rapiers. So Lamadeus just stopping pretty much everything from coming in. Dynfrin cannot mount up enough of an assault force to deal with this. And they don't have another Dante coming up either. They're not going for another Strider. I'm a bit surprised as to why. I mean, seriously, they could go for like two or three more Dantes. They could go for a Bantha at this point for the amount of money they have. That would easily win the game. And Dante would win the game without actually risking them being overrun in the process. Still, Dine Frein not really going for a huge amount here that's actually going to be massively useful yet. I mean, there, there's some damage here and there. There's some additional firepower here and there. But pretty much the only focus from Dine Frein is just setting up the Warrior Glaive Rocco army. Hey, that bit over there. Using it to assault the southern side. I mean, trying to keep constant pressure onto Lamadeus. And Dynefrin does have an economic advantage now, other than Reclaim, and even then, Dynefrin has a strong economic advantage. So another Dante is coming up. Are we going to see multiples? I don't know. I don't think so. But yeah, there's the Dante, at least. That's another Dante. That's good. That might not work, though. The Impalers are going down. The counterattack from Lamadeus able to break through the north side. This could open things up heavily. The Dante won't be in in time to really stop this. The there are enough bandits that the Rapiers can't even deal with them efficiently. So a lot of damage is being dealt here. All the Conjurers going down as well. So the northern side is kind of broken. Dynfrain not really able to hold that especially effectively, though the Dante is done. Not sure if it's going to go over to the north. It might just be pushed over to the north by the Warriors having to go reinforce the northern side. But now everything here going along the, the little crescent choke point. At the same time, ooh, nice. Time for coming back here with the warrior to take out some of the northeast as well. Not really paying a huge amount of attention to that, though, apparently. And at the same time, the southern side taking a bunch of damage as well. I feel like Lamadeus is starting to win this in terms of army size. Like, most of Time Friend's force right now is that Dante, which is going to the southern side. At this point, I don't agree with that, being that that's where all of the Rockos, or sorry, all of the rogues are. And that was the exact reason I said go north, or go south last time. But admittedly, the rogues are kind of everywhere. To the extent that I'm a bit surprised, we aren't seeing, like, two or three hundred glaives just go around the map, cleaning up all of these rogues. For the amount of money Dynefrain has, that could work. It'd be a bit risky, because you'd have to basically have a hundred glaives just at once. But maybe. Might just work. At any rate, the Dante coming in here, it gets d gun out. It, it can target it at the rogues, get rid of most of the rogues. But yeah, this is really risky. This is, like I said, don't bother. Oh, the hill getting in the way. The Dante not even able to do anything with his D-gun. But the Rogue's also getting out of the way, trying to take the southern side instead. At the same time, Dynefrain's commander goes down as a result of a nice clever little approach there from Lamadeus. Dynefrain losing all their storage at the same time. I expect to see a storage in a few seconds, but still, that sucks. That's, that's metal and energy they could have used, but they're not accessing at this point. Bit of a shame, and there's the storage, actually, already getting rebuilt. Or getting built up, so it's still healthy. Dynefrain's able to recover from that. Lost some energy, lost some metal, but it's fine. They will live. They will get a nice D-gun shot off on the rogues, managing to basically stop the southern force from being at all a threat. But the northern side, on the other hand, that is a threat. Lamadeus is breaking through that quite effectively, able to take out the northwest, no problem, able to take out... Probably the entire north side of this base. Like, that... That flank around there with the rogues. That was extremely effective. The Dante... I mean, the best thing I think it could do right now is probably to see what it can do to push forward. Get north. Take out what it can. It's not a whole lot of support forces, though. All the possible support forces are now trying to deal with these rogues. Okay, I like the Ravager. That's not a bad idea. It's fast enough. It should still be a threat to the rogues. But the Dante needs repairs... And there are no repairs nearby. There's no, nothing to repair. Okay, where's the Conjurers? Why are the Conjurers not repairing? At least the Brawler is probably going to go down and it will not be able to take out the Dante in time. But the Dante is hurt bad. And there's the Conjurers to repair it. 
Not sure that's going to be enough in time, though. That's, that's pretty good. It's a healthy amount, but at this point, Dying Friend, having lost the north side, lost a lot of their metal in the process. Like, they lost about 20 metal that they had income. So their position's not great. Lamadeus is actually taking a commanding lead right now. The counterattack should be able to come in and deal a fair bit of damage, but unfortunately no dedicated anti-air in this group. The closest they have are the warriors, but because of the position, because of this cliff here, the rapiers are actually out of range of most of the warriors. So there's no real way that the warriors can actually deal with this stuff. Dimethrin instead just going around the side. Instead, looks like they probably want to focus strong attack over to this northern choke point here. If they do it right, they should be able to take out everything, actually. Like, there's still an opening. If you look in Lamadeus' base, this is... This is still kind of doable. With enough, like, first strike firepower, though, and these defenders, though, they're causing loads of problems. Hmm. Yeah, this is kind of tricky. I would actually say go for a missile silo. Just go for missile silo and infernos and start just burning up everything. Taking all the static defenses that way. Waste Lamadeus' metal, because Lamadeus has been spending loads of metal on their static defenses, and that's not, that's helping them to stay in the game, but it's not helping them to win the game. And if they lose that, they're going to have very little to stop Dynefrain from just walking through and tearing everything apart. And even then, Dynefrain's still able to do quite a bit of damage, even with the static defenses in position. So there's not a whole lot that Dynefrain really has to worry about, except making sure they can break the static defense line. If they can break the static defense line, they have the game. If they get a missile silo, they can get an Inferno to do that. I realize it's out of meta, but darn it. It's mass static defense. There aren't very many other options. Other than maybe Catapult. And I don't see that either. It's kind of surprisingly, actually. That's another one that comes up in 1v1 a lot. But there's no Catapults. It's probably the best option, and... Wow, did that just... No, the Dante's still here. I'm thinking that wasn't the Dante. That was a bunch of conjurers. The Dante doesn't go down, down that unceremoniously. It's still going to go down, though. I mean, there's no way these brawlers aren't going to kill it. I mean, the brawlers might go down in the process, but that's still enough. Time frame still only has the one Dante. They haven't been going for multiple Dantes. They haven't gone for, like, Dante after Dante after Dante, which is fairly typical in a late game 1v1. They haven't gone for Dante Catapult Mix, which is also fairly typical for, for late game 1v1, though less typical. They're going for... Dante almost as a distraction, like almost as a way of forcing a bunch of metal and position loss from Lamadeus in order to take out a few things here and there, take out some assets, but then attack with a real attack over in another direction completely. Like this, what we see right now, where some of the brawlers are going down, and that's actually not going to be too threatening, only two tridents, not a big deal. The main deal, the main big deal is the northeast being torn to pieces, because that's happening. Like, Diamond should be able to tear that apart, no problem. Lamadeus will be losing that. And at the same time, Diamond also coming in from the south side, cleaning up what they had torn apart with the Dante, and then pushing forward even more into Lamadeus' base. Yeah, the northeast is done. The south... Actually, northeast is really done. Holy crap. The Brawler's coming in here dealing a fair amount of damage, but it doesn't matter. The Geo Plant's still gone. The Metal Extractors are still gone. Lamadeus is still losing a lot of their static economy in the process, and Diamond while well, they haven't rebuilt all of it, they are rebuilding some of it. They have managed to get some of their static economy going again. So Dying Friend's economy is still fairly healthy. And the Reclaim as well, so they're doing fine. Like Dying Friend is actually doing a really nice job. They have the Reclaim fields completely to themselves. Lamadeus is a small amount of Reclaim, but not enough to really compete. So Dying Friend right now just needs to keep pushing. They have the Attrition advantage, they have the Economic advantage, they have a pretty strong Positional advantage. These are all a bunch of rogues, and the units they have here in the Ravagers should be able to come in and distract them quite a bit. Which will open things up for the warriors to get in there. Or not, maybe just don't coordinate and have your warriors go to their deaths. I guess that works too. Still, though, the... In the northern side, ah, man, that's... That's turning out to be tough. The Vandals, wow, the Vandals is coming in as distraction forces. I don't know if they expect there to be air forces behind the ground army, but... That didn't seem to work too well. And at this point, Dying Friend going for Jump Bot as well. Firewalker, I guess. That's another option. Actually, that's another good option. Firewalker to get rid of the static defenses. 
Or maybe Archangels as well. I think Firewalker is the way they're going with that. That's usually why people build Jumpbot Factories. Get Firewalker, use it to smash up defenses, and then go from there. Probably to tear apart this area down here. And we don't know. It's actually hard to say. At this point, though, the northern side has pretty much broken. Dimefrain, I don't know, they're getting pincered at this point. These raptors, if they're not careful, they go to the northern side of this line, they'll be fine. If they try to break through the middle, they're going to get pincered and die. But it looks like they're kind of staying steady, so they're not going too far forward anyway. Which is still wise. On the other hand, the southern side, brawlers are going down slowly but surely, but not surely enough. And the gremlins are being torn apart. Well, the brawlers are going down faster, though. Still putting a lot of pressure on Lama Deus and forcing them to not really go for that stuff. The brawlers aren't able to stay in position. Nothing coming out of the jump bot factory, though. I don't know why some nothing was queued when the thing was under construction, because I really expected firewalkers. Maybe they just want the option. Like, if they need firewalkers because they find the defenses are still too strong, then build firewalkers and then the defenses won't be as strong because they'll be on fire. And indeed, there's the firewalker. All right, so firewalker should be up in a half minute. Once that's done, I don't see Lamadeus able to maintain their position. Most of their position has been maintained due to their massive amount of static defenses and dying for not going for strong artillery. Probably because they expected if they did go for strong artillery, then the main force of Lamadeus would wreck them due to lack of army. But at this point, Dimefrain has managed to raid their way enough that they're confident, clearly, that Lamadeus does not have the economy to mess with them if they go for a Firewalker. So the Firewalker should be able to finish the job, tear apart all these defenses. And then that will be it. Dimefrain will have the game. Unless Lamadeus goes for something completely different, which I don't really see what they could go for right now. Uh, to get rid of the Firewalker, I guess if they went for a bunch... Oh, the Raiders wouldn't really work. I mean, Dimefrain doesn't have anywhere near the static defenses, but Bandits be torn apart by the Warriors. So that's not going to work. I like this raid over here to the north, but it's not going to be enough. And Lamadeus, having lost their commander, and thus their storage, and quite a bit of economy on top of that, they're not able to maintain a position. I don't really see what option they have here. They have to go for some weird Hail Mary play with, like, either Missile Silos, or Striders, or bunch of black dons or something like that. I can't think of what they could possibly do. At this point, I think it's too late. I think they had a bit of a chance earlier when they were focusing more on defenses. But now with the Firewalker up, there's not much. Like, they're maintaining a position, but they are losing the attrition ward. They are basically getting torn apart by the number of, well, the number so much of units, but just the types of units as well. Like, there's the bandits to get rid of the rogues. The pure rogue army has been pretty much countered. And I don't see Lamadeus doing much else. I mean, they have Bandit Thug coming in now with the Brawlers, but the Brawlers aren't going to be a problem due to the amount of anti-air. Not a bad idea for getting rid of the Firewalker, but overall not great. And Lamadeus throws in the towel, realizing there's not much more they can do. They're way behind economically as well, and that is game. Quite the game, too. Kind of got grindy in the middle there because of this northern choke point that just would not go down to either player. I mean, with Lama Deus's main base being right there, obviously it's going to be very difficult when they have 50 metal per second. Like, they're going to be rebuilding a rogue, like, every two seconds. It's faster to build them than to have them die. But yeah, so metal income is fairly easy. Or, fa sorry, fairly even. Metal excess. Dime thrown with almost 4,000 excess. Not just because of the commander. Overall, they were reclaiming stuff. That was one bit where they reclaimed at 39 metal per second reclaim and spent none of it. But I agree with that because, like I said, it meant Lamadeus didn't get that reclaim. And Lamadeus, man, they really had the unit value advantage. I guess that's the big thing. Like, after the midway point, after the point where they kind of lost the northern side of that first Dante, they never got the unit advantage back. They kept fighting, but they kept fighting into losing battles. So they never really died, they just didn't get the damage needed to break out. Although metal produced and used, I mean, Lamadeus had the metal use advantage for the most part. They just they just lost more units. They didn't have the unit value advantage. They, the attrition was in Dimethrine's favor, and eventually the economy also kind of was. Or it was even enough, at least, that the attrition made the difference. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Bit of a longer set of games, but it was, to an extent, making up for the fact that I didn't do this last week. So I hope you enjoyed that, and thanks for watching. Have a good night, everyone.